Hey guys, today I received this awesome package in the mail, through FedEx I should say, and uh, it's from a couple of my friends. So let's see what is in the package, all right? People are like, hey, did you receive that package? I'm like, yeah, I just haven't got a chance to get in the office and, and go through what I need to as far as my mail and everything. I'm like, listen, I'm gonna make a priority of it. I'm gonna open it up on video to show everybody what I got and see what's in here. So let's just open it up. Don't know what's on the inside of this box yet. Let's see, right? Let's be blunt. You're gonna be my best man. Woo! Big shout out to Harshall. This is this is my brother from another mother, and he even included some photos of us through the years. Like these are real pictures. Like these aren't like graphics that they put on this card. It's like literally photos that we took from one of those old Polaroid cameras and, and put on here. So this is awesome. Big shout out to my brother Harshall, man. Doing big things. London right now. Wish I was here with you or wish you were here with me, man, for sure. Let's see what else we got here. Harshall always does it right. I can say that. So, Baccarat? So let's see what's in this box. Serious guys. Wow. Baccarat glasses, dude. I'll put these to good use, Harsh, I promise. Or me and you will for sure. What else we got here? Ooh, Hermes. Hermes. It's all fancy. I'm not this fancy. Parcels made me fancier through the years. Alright, Hermes Paris. Ooh. Cufflinks. I'll definitely be using these for sure. And the H, you always know those Hermes. H, baby, you gotta love it. And knowing Harshall, he probably got this when he was in Paris. JT, that's nice. Distillery, oh, these are single malt Scott whiskey. What's this? Single malt Scotch whiskey? Wow, so it's a whole bunch of different single malt whiskeys. Even a little blue label. I know all you guys know that one, Johnny Walker. Wow, this is super dope and super custom. Holy cow, this is beautiful. Thank you so much to Harshall, his beautiful fiance, Carla. I love you guys. It's my brother and my sister. I appreciate this. And you know I'm gonna be your best man, dude. We're gonna do it up for sure. So I'm really looking forward to this. His wedding is uh, coming up very, very soon in Switzerland. So I can't wait for the wedding. Can't wait for you guys to combine. You guys are a beautiful couple. God bless, and I'll see you guys in Switzerland.
All right, so we're getting ready to pump up, right? So at that point, we're using one of the great type medical center therapies, Hercules Potion. And this one has a pump factor out of this world. Arginine and L-citrulline um, are the main, main contributors to this. And what they're going to do is they're precursor to nitric oxide. Um, they're going to create vasodilation um, to create more blood flow all the way throughout the body. Um, now, you can either inject this just regular into your deltoid or any intermuscular injection you want to. So at that point, you'll, you'll get really, really instant gratification by spot injecting, uh, but you don't have to, right? Some people think, oh, I can't do this. I don't want to inject this all different parts of my body. And that's okay too. So any muscle in the body that you're comfortable with injecting with, this is going to be it. And it's done with a little insulin needle. So at that point, it's virtually painless um, when you're injecting. Um, it's really simple, really easy. Even if you've never done an injection your whole life, um, this one will be very uncomplicated for you to use. At that point, let's do it. All right, so we've got some different ones laid out. Obviously with this, we're going to clean the area. Sorry. So the first question was today we were talking about going in your biceps. What I like to do is, is you're going to clean the area first. You're going to go here and you're going to create a little circle and then push that circle out. What you're doing is you're pushing bacteria and dirt away. Don't go back and forth. Don't breathe on it. Don't blow on it. Thinking like, oh, I'm just going to try it quicker. All right. So at that point, what I like to do is with biceps is like to come over here and I'm gonna put my bicep down flat right. not touching anything and you can literally see where are your veins right if you have veins or anything this isn't gonna hurt you you're not gonna kill yourself or anything like that so don't worry you just want to go straight in and usually what you want to do is you want to go usually center the muscle and when you go center the muscle it's gonna disper disperse evenly throughout the muscle usually all right so it's gonna go straight down Nice and simple. And we're not going into a vein, we're going into the muscle. Straight out. That's one. All right, so we're going kind of a similar spot. So when I, when I flex, I can see the, the top of the muscle. Oh, nice and easy. And that's how you do biceps. What's up guys, Andre Adams here, my beautiful wife, Rebecca. We're getting ready to do a quick pump up and hit some upper body today. Hey, yeah. With John and Big Drew. For me, I'm gonna actually inject in my triceps today. It's one of my favorite muscle groups. Help uh, really maximize the pump and uh, speed up that muscular development. So the first thing we're gonna do is clean each site. And we're just gonna repeat on the other side.
we get older, it's harder to heal. When you're young and you get injured, it's a lot easier for you to recover and heal yourself. Your body repairs itself a lot simpler when you're younger. It's just a fact. As we get older, we know that if we hurt ourselves, it usually takes a lot longer to recover from those injuries. And people injure themselves every single day in every kind of situation you could possibly think of. Whether it's at their job or walking down the street, right? They trip over their feet or some stump in the road. They're at the gym. They hurt themselves lifting or their shoulder, their, their knee, their elbows. All these different things happen. And we all get injured. I don't think anybody out there has not got an injury before, right? And if you're old like me, and I'm in my 40s, right? Or if you're older, you're probably thinking the exact same thing. Like, yeah, I don't recover as fast as I used to back in the day. Or I don't want to really get injured because at that point I know I'm going to be out of the gym or out of my activity for months at a time. Who knows, right? And we might have a lot of inflammation in our body, especially as we get older and we have more injuries and we're dealing more things around us. Inflammation is prevalent in the body, right? So what can we do to go against all these different things? To help heal yourself faster possibly. To help get some of that inflammation out of your body. To improve your quality of life whether it's your activities or your daily functions. So this is what I'm talking about, TB500. It's a synthetic version of TB4, thymosine beta-4, and it's a peptide. It's generally regarded as safe, so there's really no negative side effects that are gonna to happen to you, and it can help in a lot of different scenarios, whether it's your joints, your ligaments, any soft tissue areas, and it works by creating new blood vessels to the area to get blood to the area to recover those areas or to help heal. Now, it's not the end all be all of recovery. If you break bones, this isn't gonna repair bones. All right, I'm just being honest with you guys, very transparent and forward, but it's helped a number of different people. And people that were really thinking about getting surgery, this has benefited them tremendously where they have not had to get surgery. We've had excellent patient results with TB500. So, if you're looking to help yourself out with an injury you might have sustained, or you're trying to be preventative about injuries possibly, or you want to increase your flexibility, TB500 may be the therapy for you guys. It's an awesome peptide therapy. I really suggest that you guys look into it. If you guys are hurt, want to recover faster, want to be preventative, or just be healthier overall. So if you guys are looking to improve your quality of life and heal quicker, contact us about TB500. Call or text 727-389-3220 and check out the website, TitanMedicalCenter.com. Thanks guys. What's up guys, John here. I'm Sharice. And we're back with another Cupid's Corner. That's right, another one. Me and my beautiful wife here, Sharice, are gonna help you guys out with great tips, tricks, and things that are gonna hopefully entice, help, and uplift your relationship to a whole new, better and positive level. And don't worry guys, if you're single, or ladies, if you're single out mm -hmm. there, and you're maybe in between relationships, mm -hmm. or don't even wanna talk about relationships, when you do, or when you get to that point, this should hopefully give you guys some good advice about how to make that new relationship better than the last one, yep. for sure, 100% of the time. And it's usually all about experience, too, which leads us to our topic of the day and the question you should really, you know, kind of ask yourself, right? It is, what, do you, what did you used to believe about relationships that you no longer do? Mm, that's a good question. It's a really, really good question. It's a good question because... I think, you know, from when we are kids until now to adults, obviously we've had a lot more time and experience, but what was our perception back then to now about what relationships were going to be like or, or exactly what they should be like or what do you do in relationships? 
I think a lot of things have changed, right? I agree. Yeah. So for me, I mean, I, I always uh, I think about this. I'm like, all right, mm-hmm. so, you know, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, tell me. <laughs> go, tell growing me. up like the Greek, you know, I am. God, tell me. Uh, I already know, know the answer. <laughs> I thought, you know, relationships really determined, uh, you know, almost almost gender roles. I'm, I'm an old school person, right? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> Politics on ABC. <laughs> so, no, I'm just an old school. I'm an old school thinker as far as that goes. And you know, I wish I was born almost in the 50s and stuff like that than now. Because, you know, I like that time period in the United States, you know, where everybody was open, um, you know, you could trust people more likely, everything was out in the open, and uh, it was a lot better, I think, in my eyes. Anyway, but I always go back to that, right, to that lifestyle where, you know, the guy goes out to work, um, the wife's at home, she, you know, and, and she's working, you know, at home, basically, with the kids and taking care of the home. So it's a job, too, so I recognize that right away. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, that's kind of what I thought of relationships. Like, you know, guys do one thing, girls do another thing, and, you know, they come together. And that's that's kind of what it is, you know. They mm-hmm. love each other, but they also have what they're supposed to do for the relationship. I guess that, that's the best thing, right? Yeah, he, thought, he was like that. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely like that. It took I, a few years to break that. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is, this is Roche John Day. Uh, so, um, you know, I mean, listen, I, I'm not, I'm very truthful and honest about it. And I wasn't narcissistic to the point where you got to do this or that's it. Like, you know, I, I, I don't think I was to that point. Mm. Yeah, maybe I was to yeah, a little bit. Know, to a circumstance, yeah. you know. Hey, listen, I still think to this day, alphas are alphas, betas are betas. There can only be I'm one alpha in a relationship, this. right? I'm getting him. I, I'm, so, no, I'm only an alpha outside of the relationship. You know, in, in old school thinking, you know, the male is always the alpha. They're going to lead the pack, right? And, and the beta is usually the, the females or lesser males, I guess, that are going to follow. And, um, you know, it, it is what it is. Now, do I believe that to this day? No. Now, what I think about relationships to this point is, is that... I've showed him that I can bring in money. I don't even think it's the money. <laughs> I showed him that I can do more than cook because I can't cook. <laughs> I, th- I, think to I can me, clean. I think to me it was, it was uh, <laughs> you know, being able to give up some of that trust to do these things, right, or to be able to follow through on some of these different things. And I think that's, you know, that's obviously proven, you know, in our relationship. So, you know, I'm more of an open thinker to that to these days. Now, do I think what's going on in certain circumstances is right? No, but I think males... You know, should do men things and females should do female things to a certain degree. And uh, males should definitely not cross over into females. And uh, if females want to cross over to males, go ahead. I don't got a problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't got a problem with it either way. But in sports wise, I, I definitely think there's an issue there. But other than that, man, you know, relationships are, are what they are, right? They're, they're something that you guys need to work on. Um, 24-7. It's a job. You always got to be working towards it's a better relationship. It's constantly evolving, too. It's constantly, it's constantly evolving. evolving. People, you know, as, as themselves are, are evolving, too, in the relationship, whether mm-hmm. it's, you know, your job where you guys are, you know, expanding the family and bringing in little ones, um, even pets and stuff like that. That's, now, those that's are children, too. Little fur babies. They're definitely there for you guys. Your I mean, parents. Those are also children as the, well. The parents, too. We yeah. rack a bunch of... I mean, we should. Yeah. I should be able to claim all these things, right? <laughs> On taxes, right? We should be able to claim animals, too. Yeah, we should. <laughs> you know, and I think at one point, I think we will get there. One, one the, point. I won't doubt it. Yeah. I won't doubt it. You'll be able to claim yeah. birds, hamsters, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I'm so, sure. We will have 10 hamsters locked up in a little cage in a room just so they can claim 10. I mean, it's really crazy how things are these days. I mean, think about it. When we were kids, right, you know, people could actually do violence against animals, right, and, and not have any have any recourse, mm-hmm. right? So back in the day, it's definitely not right. I'm definitely not saying I'm an animal lover big yeah. time. But, you know, if kids killed a dog or a cat or whatever it is and, and got, I, I think everybody when we were kids has seen this, the new age kids I don't think have seen something like that, or shot them or something like that with BB guns. I, listen, kids back when we were growing up were a lot different a whole other than the kids game. these days, right? It's a whole other ball we game. Were, we were a lot more freer, free-spirited and being able to do different things. And I think our parents let us loose to be able to do more things. Um, you know, you always see those memes out there with the little kid, you know, with the, 
the bashed up eye and stuff like that. Like, oh, I just had a great day outside, you know, because that's what it was. I mean, you'd go out, <laughs> you'd have fun with your friends, you know. Come I mean, up with scratches on your knees and all yeah, kinds of boo boos. You know, maybe you guys are playing tackle football. People, you know, it happens. I mean, listen, I remember when I was a kid, my brother was nine and a half years older than me. And at that point, my brother, he would have to, like, literally take me everywhere he was with because my parents were entrepreneurs and were never around. So I used to go with him, and, and, and hockey up up north is, is really big, right? And it's really cold where I'm from up north. So we would have this pond in the back, and these guys would come over and play hockey. Now, I'm, like, maybe 10 years old. My brother's, like, 19 years old. And he's got his buddies in there playing hockey. Of course I want to get out there and play with them. And this is real hockey. So, I mean, I remember seeing some crazy stuff and actually had my nose bashed with with, uh, <laughs> with with the stick and actually come home. My parents were flipping out about it uh, to a certain extent. But that's just, you know, that's what, what happens, you know. So, uh, it, it's crazy, you know, experience. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm probably like maybe the opposite of what John just said. Um, like what my, what, what's changed about what I thought about relationships. So, you know, when I first met John, you know, I told him cause I'm, I, I walked into the relationship alpha. I've always been an alpha. I was a child alpha. I grew up, I came out of the womb and I'm like alpha. Cause I was like, I'm gonna be alpha forever. Right. So of course I'm walking in the relationship and I tell him, I'm like, Hey, so just so you know, like, I don't want you like blowing up my phone and trying to like track me down. Don't ask me where I'm going. And you know, just, we're going to just do two separate things. Okay. So he actually just did that. Right. And you know, every other relationship. <laughs> I'm like, I'm okay with that. <laughs> oh, he was, super, he was super okay with that. Right. <laughs> every other relationship was kind of like, whatever you do your thing, I'll do my thing. I don't care. Whatever, whatever, whatever. It was kind of one of those like. I don't care. And then all of a sudden I come across John and this was a very special relationship, obviously. And I'm just like, I don't know what it was, but obviously I wanted to spend like every single moment with him. This was after I had told him this and then he abided by these you know, requests of mine. And then I'm like, Ugh. I'm like, but he's not calling me. I'm like, he, what's going on here? I'm like, why is he not calling me? Like, and so I'd call him and be like, wow, you didn't call me today. Like, are you not thinking about me? Or like, what's your problem? And he'd be like, well, you tell me not to call you. So I didn't. I was like, okay. I'm like, well, you know, you still call, you know? And so he, he still abided by it, but, you know, it flipped me upside down, which I wasn't used to. And I was like, oh, I just wanted to spend all my time with him. So like, I always thought it was kind of like, you know, to always spend separate times, you know, away with your friends and, you know, do separate things and everything. And now that I'm with John, it's, you know, different. And I feel like, you know, we should do everything together. Everything's done together. We hang out together. We do, literally do everything together. Even like when we hang out with friends, they're all friends that we hang out together with, right? He doesn't like have his friends and I have my friends. We usually, even if he has friends that didn't know me or I have friends that didn't know him, we still all hang out as friends, all of us, right? So it's just, it's a different type of relationship for sure. Cause not everybody's like that, but that's kind of one thing that's like a huge change for me because when I first met him, it wasn't like that at all. It was not, <laughs> not at all. And then of course he flipped the script on me and I was like, wait, but I do want you to call me. <laughs> but wait, I, I do want to hang out with you. <laughs> Be careful uh, what, what you, you ask, ask for. for. Oh. Those, those old lines are so true. Every time I say one of them, man, like, <sighs> I cannot believe this, but yeah, yeah. It's so true. Be careful what you ask for, you know, what mm -hmm. you really want, because you just might get it, mm -hmm. right? And when you get it, you might not like what you get because you thought it was going to be something totally different, and you really didn't feel like that. But you so. see what happened here, though, right? So we accommodated to each other, right? Because yeah. John, I'm sure, was used to doing his own thing with his guys, right? And he had accommodated to me. Yeah. Like, okay, fine, I guess you can, you can come along on this little trip, right? And I'm like, yippee, I get to go on a guy's trip, right? Yeah. Cool me, right? So, and then I accommodated to him, right? Because, listen, I worked two jobs and went to college. So, I didn't, there was no time to cook and clean. I mean, I didn't leave my house, like, or wherever I was living, apartment, whatever. I didn't leave it in a total mess because, it was, you know, I kept everything clean. But as far as, like, cooking a full-blown meal or something, 
That didn't happen because there was no time to cook full blown meals. So, you know, when I go with John, I'm like, all right, I'll meet you at this halfway point and, you know, I'll cook or I'll learn to cook or, you know, you show me how to cook because he's showed me how to cook, if you can believe that or not. Sorry, mom. I know you're watching. Yeah, Sita. <laughs> Sita Williams. <laughs> Maharaj. <laughs> You guys see her punch in the arm for me. Aye, no, I'm just joking. Aye, 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 aye. You know, she taught me how to cook some stuff like rice and and stuff. So, anyways, John didn't want to eat box food, so no. I didn't know how to cook anything outside of the box. So, you know. Box mashed potatoes. <laughs> you gotta be joking me, dude. I'm like, Sit down. I'm like, like eat this. It's just flakes. You're crazy, man. What you just eating? put the flakes in. Put a little, put a back little to the future water, too. put a little bit of butter and a little bit of milk, and then put it like That's this. Garbage. And stick it in the microwave, and here's yeah. your potatoes. No, Apocalypse maybe. <laughs> right now, and I got potatoes free. No way. <laughs> He's telling me I gotta cut these potatoes up. I gotta mash them up and stuff with my That's actual right. like. That's right. Get the little bowl. Get the, 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 the whole thing. You know how hard that is? No, you got the little machines now. The mixers. You have to mash it up. You got the mixers. Anyways, but you meet each other at a halfway point, right? So everybody's happy. The experience is everything. So that's what it's all about. <laughs> all right, guys. That's been another great show from us here at Cupid's Corner. Me and my beautiful wife, Sharice. And me, John, will be back with you guys next week, ABC, 11 a.m. Make sure you watch it live. But if you don't, don't worry. You can DVR it. And if you missed that too, just go over to YouTube, type in Titan Medical Center, and hit that subscribe button and watch all the great content that Titan Medical Center has with these shows and much, much more. So thank you guys again, and we'll see you guys next Sunday on the Cupid's Corner. See you then.